Yeah, Azorius Control may have less dead cards in game one and be a quote-unquote best matchup. Barkley's never lost in Historic yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going for my older brother. Let's go, Brad Nelson. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna go contrarian to you and say Brad Barkley is going to get this. We're going to see a Scottish champion. I have a feeling in my bones. Okay, but, uh, okay. Away from that grand final as we get into battle here in the upper semifinals. <laughs> Ew, that yeah, is not, not great. Yeah, pretty much any black card out of Brad's deck, except Thoughtseize, is going to be something you don't want here. There's so many dead cards uh, for game one for Brad Nelson that mm -hmm. it, it's going to be a very, very tough game. Because not only do you have Eliminates, Extinction Events, Fatal Pushes, you also have Aether Gust. So mm -hmm. <laughs> game one is going to be very, very tough uh, for Nelson. Post board, though, hopefully uh, uh, an easier time of it for Brad Nelson. But uh, it's going to have to deal with this hand here of two Thought Caesars up against a hand of Baffling Ends, Cast Out, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, and Disdainful Stroke. Yeah, and uh, the big story here is Barkley just doesn't have a single dead card in, in the deck. So, And we, we heard him say in his interview here that this is a good matchup. Good matchup and hasn't lost a single match. So, um, yeah, really impressive stuff from Barkley. All right, well, we are ready to rock and roll, so let's get things underway here. I'm going to start things off with the planes. Uro off the top. That's something that Brad, will, Brad Nelson will be very happy to see. Just for clarity's sake, we'll go by Nelson and Barkley for this matchup. It would be pretty fun if we just go Brad, Brad, and just keep them guessing. But yeah, well, you're probably could, right. Yeah, We could never be wrong then, and Brad does the thing. You know, <laughs> I do think Brad is going to win. So, yep, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson here with the thoughts. He's going to take a look in hand and find plenty of planeswalkers and counter spells. What would you pick here, Corey? Narset Parter of Veils. This is one of the toughest cards for Nelson to deal with. Just uh, so many cards that draw cards during Br Nelson's main phase. This is going to be tough to get used to going on the last <laughs> end. Uh, but yeah, you've got to get that card off the battlefield. It's so strong against uh, Sultai and Four Color. Yeah, especially with two Uros in hand, Nelson certainly wants to be drawing those cards and getting those extra land drops, helping to ramp and padding the life total, which won't be that much of a factor in this matchup, as uh, the Azorius Control deck doesn't typically deliver the biggest beating in terms of uh, life total damage. Not exactly. I think the biggest beating Azorius Control has is that emblem on Teferi Hero of Dominaria. That's the big beating. <laughs> hey, there are Shark Typhoons in here, and you know we want to see them hardcast. So. Oh, I mean, everyone wants to see Shark Typhoons hardcasted, so that makes sense. So a decision here whether to get the Fabled Passage down or the Breeding Pool could have gone for Fabled Passage unless there was no other swamp to get the Thoughtseize out. Yeah, there definitely is a swamp, and Brad was give Nelson was given the option there um, to Thoughtseize, and I think if um, there was four mana on the battlefield, Nelson would have immediately snapped off Thoughtseize to avoid Teferi Hero of Dominaria from being cast, but now, with Nelson waiting, does run into the problem where this can and probably will get absorbed, mm -hmm. and then if we have a land off the top for Barkley, then Teferi comes down. And we all know how much fun Teferi is to play against as Absorb <laughs> takes care of that Thought Seize and Uro is going to follow up here after that Disruption spell. All right, so as things stand at the moment, not enough cards in the graveyard just yet for Nelson to start escaping the Uro. But uh, we'll hopefully be able to cycle away this triome if needs be to get a few more things in the graveyard. And uh, there's going to be a concession. I have that exact same feeling. If I see Teferi Hero of Dominaria, I feel the same as you, Brad Nelson. Yeah, I feel like that's a thing that normally happens on the ladder when you play against, you know, a, a card that's going to be really tough for you to get out of. Not in mm -hmm. Nelson's case. Nelson knows that that is going to be the end of game one and just saves some time instead of making Barkley go through it. Yeah, I, I appreciate Brad Nelson's approach to scooping. You know, if something's about to happen that just pushes inevitability way into Brad Barkley's favor, then, you know, let's just get on to game number two. Let's sideboard, get out all these dead cards like the Aether Gusts and the, uh, the Fatal Pushes, some of them, and the Eliminates, that sort of thing. Although Eliminate could be useful if there are any sharks to speak of. Uh, but, you know, talk us through the sideboarding process here for both Brad's. 
Yeah, so getting out all of these Aethergust Fatal Push Extinction events, Yasharn also not being bad, leaving in one because it is a fine card, but Eliminate actually is pretty good because there is one thing you have to deal with, and that is Narset. So Eliminate can still take that mm -hmm. down as well as have uh, a way to answer a shark. Um, you know, once we get to the time where Barkley is cycling and making gigantic sharks, Brad's usually in a, Nelson's usually in a lot of trouble anyways. Um, but it is a good uh, kind of plan B up against that. And on Brad Barclay's side of things, what's his game plan going forward? Yeah, getting Wrath of God out of there, not exactly the piece of removal that you really want. You really want to be exiling Uro because that's one of the big advantages from these Sultai decks compared to playing Azorius Control is that Uro is just one of, if not the most powerful cards in Historic, and that constant value that it would get if you just try to wrath it away is usually going to overcome Azorius Control. So you got to exile. you got to exile it with Baffling End and Cast Out or tuck it with Teferi, something that's a little bit better of an answer than a Wrath of God. All right, let's take a look at the opening hands here. we got Grow Spiral and Nissa to look forward to for Brad Nelson. And Brad Barclay's side of things also had a mulligan... Mold to five. <laughs> Look at that dagger in Nelson's camera right there, going for the four, calling it out. <laughs> A really humble guy is my uh, is my older brother. That's for sure. <laughs> Getting things started off here with a triumph down on the battlefield, as well as an irritated farmland. That's what I like to call that card. <laughs> you love Azorius. That's your favorite color combination, I'm guessing. Oh, Ailey. I hate it with a passion, but you know what? Here we are. <laughs> oh, not me, not <laughs> me. I love me some Azorius control. Give me back to Fairy Time Raveler, please. No, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> don't like to slow things down anymore? Nope. Are, we, are we over that? Okay. We are very much over that. Do not wish that upon anyone, not even your worst nemesis. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I think Barkley would be on the side of me uh, with the looks of his deck choice. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we've got a Thoughtseize that can take care of this Narset Parter of Veils. Now, if Brad Nelson knew that card was in hand, I bet he would be firing this off without hesitation. What else is going through his mind right now? Yeah, I think mostly posturing. Um, I don't think there's any way that you don't cast Thoughtseize here, but you want to make sure that it's not very obvious that there's nothing else you can be doing this turn. Okay. So always good to pause in these situations a little bit. Sees a hand of sensor and cast down as well as Narset Parter avails. Mm. Pesky three mana planeswalker that prevents drawing, which is one of the things that the Sultai deck loves to do, evidently. Loves the grindy matchups. So a lot of things going on in this Thoughtseize right now, okay? Brad's trying to piece together how these next two turns are going to play out. And normally, you know, I put the stress on how powerful Narset Parter Avails is. But on turn three, when you can go land five and Nyssa, it's mm -hmm. not powerful. And not only that, Brad can go Ooh. land five, Nyssa. Ooh. Land five, Nyssa might not be a potential play here with the disdainful stroke being the draw yeah that disdain play. that disdainful stroke was a brad draw for nelson that's for sure <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> thank you everybody i'll be here all uh, day <laughs> you and the rest of the desk team need to go and have a pun off <laughs> just go and get it out of your systems and then come back <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair that's fair i do admire their love of puns they are wonderful, aren't they? There and you go. Crazy. You're doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> Begrudgingly, but I'm doing it. Here comes a Hydroid Crisis, just for three. Uh, suspecting that something sinister awaits for this powerful Planeswalker. So Brad Nelson's going to hang on to that for the time being and just get this 3-3 three, three out. Yeah, we saw Nelson's uh, camera there right after Barkley decided to not go for Nyssa. Kind of a head nod, like, okay, I guess this match isn't going to be so easy. You didn't fall into my trap. Oh, back up Nyssa, though. That's a nice draw. Island off the top here. Still just hanging on to that in our set. Not going to play it out just yet, but a thought sees now. This will give Brad all the information that Brad Nelson needs.
Yeah, see, this is not bad at all. If we can get land six, the co the very powerful combination of Thoughtseize, clear the way for a Nyssa, Nyssa, and then untap Zega Triome to have Disdainful Stroke to protect yourself against Cast Out. That is kind of what Nelson is probably trying to set up right now. Now, this could mean just get rid of one of these Nyssa because we got an extra one. It, it, this is essentially bait, but it's forced mm -hmm. bait. Like, you have to yeah. counter this. But Nelson is not super concerned because he does have that second copy. Yeah, the draws have been really nice here for Brad Nelson as this game works its way into the mid-game. Dovin's veto, though. Oh, my goodness. You know, I would expect... I would expect a control deck to have a fair amount of counter spells, and Brad Barkley is certainly finding them at the opportune moments. Absolutely, and Nelson is not going to be pleased with this. Right now, Nelson really wants to just take cast out and 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 cast Nissa. And here is going to be a very interesting dance, Ailey. If if Nelson were to just go watery grave, um, untapped, play Nissa, but leaving Zagoth Trium untapped then there's no opportune time for Barkley to cast cast out and, and hit Nissa because you could disdainful stroke. So Nelson might go that route because playing Nissa first here actually plays around cast out, but it doesn't play around Doman's veto. So it's it's a tough situation here, but that is what he's going for. And it's not gonna work out too well. No, oh, it's not. This is watching us a train crash in slow motion almost as Nissa mm. shakes the world is on the stack. Brad Nelson's probably thinking, was he lucky enough? Did he find another counter spell for this? And lo and behold, Brad Nelson, Barclay did. Yep, Nelson uh, definitely feeling that one as he slumped forward there. That is not what you wanted to see. Not at all. Do we still follow up with the thoughts he is here? Or are we going to wait for something else? Now that you have perfect information, I think you fire it off. Uh, put Barclay to the test. Do you want to cycle cast out? If not, we probably just take it. Um, but we'll see. Narset's still a problem if Krasis can be dealt with. Right now, Hydride Krasis being a 3-3, very smartly set from Nelson, uh, keeps Narset in check where you can't activate it or you only get that one activation and then it's going to be attacked down. Unless, of course, Narset happens to find a piece of removal to deal with said Krasis. Exactly. Baffling End being the key one here, uh, but could also find Aether Gust. Um, since Barkley does only have five mana. So if cast out's taken here, I think Barkley has to go down that route because what else are you going to do, right? So mm. that's what Nelson is is thinking right now, which is worse for me. Yeah, because it's like, this is guaranteed to remove my creature. This could potentially find removal for my creature or even something that prevents a follow-up play here from Brad Nelson in the form of a counter spell or something like that. Exactly right. And also, Barkley could just Narset, find Teferi Hero of Dominaria, and just, we don't know about the Disdainful Stroke from Barkley's side, um, but could also um, find that, just let Narset die, and then play the powerful Planeswalker after that. Yeah. A little conjecture at this point, as Brad Nelson is burning that rope, deciding over which card he would like to see the least of. And it's going to be Narset Potter of Veils into the graveyard, cast out, survives the turn. Baffling end. Oh, no. Nice. Oh. Got two pieces of removal. This was expert play by Nelson. Think how bad this turn was going to be if, if, if Nelson didn't choose Narset because we already found the baffling end. So right mm -hmm. now, if, if this was the other way around, we'd have Narset on the battlefield and no crisis just like this. So really nice play by Nelson to just give him, give him a chance. Yep. Aethergust drawn off the top, growth spiral for Nelson, finds a Indartha Trium, which will likely be cycled away to try and dig a little deeper into this library and find some more gas. Almost assuredly. No real reason to cycle it now because there isn't a two-drop that Nelson would want to cast, so decides to wait. Castle Artedvale tokens now. Getting to work on Brad Nelson's life total. 15 turn clock, if uh, only the one gets made. <laughs> If you would have told me going into this historic event that Castle Ardenvale mm. draw go decks were going to be in the semi, the upper semifinals, I would not have believed you. I don't think really anyone impressive. would have. Yeah, but, Barclay you know, just... Brad Barclay yeah. claiming to be the control player and putting on an absolute clinic here in terms of control decks. 
Hydroid Crisis, though, potentially one of the best draws for Brad Nelson as no Nar set down. If the Ether Gust does get fired off, I just get to do it all over again. I get to draw the Crisis and a couple of extra cards, and then I get to fire it off. So likely not going to see the Ether Gust here, or would you fire it off anyway? Definitely not. Cast out, if anything, is the answer for Crisis. But right now, Barkley's got a little bit of room to mess around with, so it's not forced that you have to cast out. We might still see it, but that Hydroid Crisis there from from Nelson was the best possible draw. Yeah, I mean, he was digging for a land, found one, but it was a tap land, unfortunately. Would have loved to have kept that disdainful stroke up for the uh, for the baffling end, or for the cost out, excuse me. Ooh, shark Hard cast? Is it hard yeah. cast time? Um, <laughs> Probably not. Probably, Probably not, not, but you know, you always want to see it. Really, really rough draw for Nelson, that shark typhoon. Narset is insane here and would be able to stay on the battlefield for a little bit, but that Shark Typhoon is, is going to make quick work of this Narset. Yeah. So digging deeper, trying to find some more cards. Finds a Growth Spiral, does Brad Nelson. Yeah, and right now for Nelson, what you're looking for is just more Hydroid Crisis. Just give me every Hydroid Crisis in my deck, please. Please and thank you. As we're going to see Shark Typhoon cycled, alas, no hard cost for us this turn. Dang it. Into a 4-4. Four, four. Throw a Spiral fired off, finds a Breeding Pool. That's going to enter the battlefield. And we're going to cycle away this Indartha Triome to try and find and Ooh. eliminate. So Narset's going to survive one more turn. Yeah, that that is what we f wanted to find. There's no other removal left in the deck from Nelson's side because they're all so bad against Narset and just the rest of the deck. But eliminate is exactly <laughs> what we wanted there. Yeah, and two lands off the top of Barclay, not what he's looking for. But this little one one is going to start working away at this Narset part of avails. Yeah, and now oh ho, yes. Ho, 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 ho. All right. All Nelson did there with that eliminate oh, is perfect. just perfect. Yeah, this is great. This is great. Now, both great cards, but Nelson is is deciding. Okay, would I rather Thoughtseize clear the way for the very powerful Uro Titan of Nature's Wrath, or is it just better to have two very good threats? Um, that's the pros and cons that Nelson's going through right now. Yeah, because Narset is just able to refill your hand with some more gas, you know, find oh. your Nissa potentially, find removal spells, your counters that have been boarded in. The Thoughtseize would clear the way here for Uro, and at this point, you got to think there's way more than enough cards in the graveyard to bring it back. For sure, for sure. Really tough choice here for Nelson. I, it's really hard for me, if I was in his seat, to not hit Narset there, even mm -hmm. though with perfect information that we have right now, the Thoughtseize almost seems a little better just because Gus can delay you a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, Nurse said definitely a strong pickup here. And you could find Thoughtseize off this one, you know? Yeah, that's always a potential, well, that's always a possibility. Two Shark Typhoons though, geez. <laughs> Talk about a hit. Two Shark yeah. Typhoons and the gate and a removal spell goes for the Shark Typhoon. All right, Brad Nelson, are you going to be the Shark Typhoon Hardcaster. I doubt it, though, considering this deck isn't exactly going to benefit that much off of it. I have talked to uh, to Nelson quite a lot about Shark Typhoon and watched him play a ton. And I don't think I've ever seen him hardcast Shark Typhoon. So <laughs> I don't think Nelson is going to be the one we're going to get it from uh, this round. No, I don't think so either. Being able to just have a threat in the air that's uncounterable is just way more valuable than just dumping this enchantment down and hoping you find things to trigger it. See, I was thinking it was just slightly a little bit more selfish that he wasn't giving us what we wanted here, but you know, I think that's a good explanation as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here we go. Shark Typhoon going to be cycled for three. I like this here. Not not putting Nelson in, in harm's way of Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, leaving up Disdainful Stroke. Right now, Brat, Nelson is not going for, you know, the biggest shark to try to close this game out. Uro is going to mm -hmm. do the closing out. So right now, it's just as value as possible while still protecting your <laughs> life total. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what else uh, Aether Gust doesn't hit? A Doom Whisperer. Absolutely. That is the most uh, Nelson oh. mid-range card ever is Doom Whisper. One of his favorites. 
And a thought seize to boot, so this will certainly protect all these threats that Nelson has accumulated in his hand. Gonna get rid of that ether gust. Let Uro come out to play. And potentially follow up here with a Doom Whisperer. Doom, doom, doom. Um, yeah, this is definitely looking like we might get this brattle going to game three here. Looking very good for Nelson. <laughs> it's a brattle for the ages. Goodness me. And has the mana up as well to uh, to pay for sensor if needs be. So Brad Barclay is uh, in top deck mode and we'll have to find something very, very shortly. Otherwise, this game is going to end in swift succession. Absolutely. And I wouldn't be too shocked if we see this sensor cycled to try to deal with Uro. Um, sensor's just not really going to cut it, but no reason to cycle um, with the Thoughtseize on the stack or anything. Mm -mm. Oof, Hallowed Fountain's not it. In for three, down to 11 goes Barclay. And will we see Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath, escaped? Or is it doom time? What would you go for here, Corey? I think just Uro. Um, just because if there is a counter spell, you can just recast it. But both, mm -hmm. I, both plays, I think, are very defensible. Ugh. I like to call this card the Tickle Monster. Can you imagine this thing chasing you, trying to tickle you? Yeah, I I would uh, <laughs> run very fast. That's a terrifying tickle monster, that's for yep. sure. Oh no, Glacial Oof. Fortress as well. That's nine points of damage coming in. Next turn in the air, these little one ones can't do anything about that. So yeah, we're in big, big trouble here. Barkley in his interview was saying, pick up your Glacial Fortresses again. I don't think this is exactly what he had in mind. I think <laughs> he wanted uh, those a little bit earlier, not when you're top decking at this stage of the game. And yesterday you mentioned like why why the Doom Whisperer was included, and this is exactly mm -hmm. the reason why. Being able to surveil, fill up your graveyard for Uro, dumping these cards that you don't need potentially into the graveyard is just a great way to fuel the escape creatures that you do have. Yep, 100%. Any matchup where your life total is not super pressured, Doom Whisperer is going to shine. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love a big flying trampler? Uh, Barkley right now. Yep. <laughs> Barkley's probably not, not a fan. A fan. Not a no. fan right now. All right, Uro, what you got, buddy? Let's find out. More land, more life, more cards. And got more it. More concessions. <laughs> All right. So in All the right. Battle of the Brads, Brad and Brad are one apiece. And uh, we are going to... All right, so as we get into our sideboarding there, quick thought from you, Corey. What do you make of the matchup so far? Well, I mean, we kind of figured that game one was going to go to Barkley. Too many dead cards and stuff like that, but now we're really on even footing, and Barkley gets to start. So this is going to be a lot tougher of a game for Nelson here, especially because Barkley multiplied that game as well. So going to be a good game three. All right, well, we'll see what happens in that game three right after the short break. Don't go anywhere.
The Battle of the Brads continues here at the Zendikar Rising Championship. Thank you so much for joining us today as we determine who our champion is going to be in this top eight. We're in the upper semifinals. It is Brad Barclay on Azorius Control versus Brad Nelson on four color mid range. Ori, talk us through sideboarding. Sideboarding really doesn't change too much here with play and draw. I think they're basically trying to do the same. Brad did, uh, Nelson did take out one Uro, it looks like, on the draw. Um, but other than that, really going to just stay pretty much uh, the game plan that we had for games for game two. All right, well, I'm keen to see how this one plays out. It was a very, very quick game one. Brad mm -hmm. Barkley about to resolve to fairy. Brad Nelson was having none of it, scooped him on up, got rid of the cards that don't do anything against mm -hmm. the Azorius control deck and uh, is ready to rock and roll now in game number three after picking up that victory. Yeah, and we saw Uro escape to close out that last game for Nelson. Now it's just a question of which player is going to escape this Brad Pitt that we got right here. <laughs> <laughs> You've been talking to Rich Hagen, haven't you? I did have to channel my inner Rich there, so uh, I, I hope you like that one. <laughs> Wonderfully done. All right, let's get into the magic here as we start things off with Glacial Fortress down and Zagoth Triumph from Brad Nelson's side of things. Shark Typhoon, two Eliminates on Brad Nelson's side of things, and two Counter Spells in Dovin's Veto, Absorb, and two Shark Typhoons. Ooh. Yeah, not exactly what you want to see from Nelson's side, and Barkley did have a mulligan, so not necessarily ideal, but other than that, uh, both have a good mix of lands and some interaction here, so... Um, Solid hands from both, but nothing, you know, extraordinary here. Nothing to nothing to write home about just yet, yeah. but... Uh... Ooh, search for his canter though. That I believe is a one of in the deck, and it is an Ooh. absolutely powerful card in this archetype. It really is. There is not really any field of ruin or anything like that in any of these decks because the mana base is just so demanding mm -hmm. here in historic that 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 is the type of card that can just run away uh, from Barclay's side. It is that. So both players just. Getting their mana, their mana bases set up, not doing anything too outrageous at this point of the game, as the first action or the first thing we see on the battlefield is going to be this itty bitty baby shark. Baby shark, everybody's favorite song, right? Do, 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 do. <laughs> baby shark is not the most terrifying threat in the world, but uh, it'll start getting some damage in here against Brad Nelson. Absolutely. And Barkley really just trying to make sure. Uh, he hits every land drop right now. So mm -hmm. Baby Shark, uh, not ideal. And if Barkley had a lot more lands in hand where the pressure wasn't put on, probably wouldn't have cycled there. Um, but I like uh, delaying it a little bit here. Yeah, just trying to find the land drops, keeping up mana for Ether Gust or Dovin's Veto, depending on what Brad Nelson finds next. He's got two Thought Seizers to work with. Yeah, and I like the patience from Nelson, not really firing these off quite yet. You want to set up your thought seizes. And the thing about this Azorius control deck is it has a lot of redundancy. A lot of these cards kind of do the same thing. Stop Nissa, right? Like that's the mm -hmm. that's the name of the game here. So I wouldn't be too shocked if we don't see Brad hold. Well, actually, now that I say that, we do want to cast this because there could be a Teferi on the other side. And Brad Nelson does not have an answer to that. So mm -hmm. I, I do think you have to fire it off, but that's something Nelson wanted to do. Let's say he drew one of his counter spells like Disdainful Stroke or, or Negate or something like that. You would want to hold off until you have something big to, to force through. Yeah, and taking the Shark Typhoon there, re recognizing that that can get another big threat on the battlefield mm -hmm. with counter spell backup, can draw further into the deck. You know, a great pick there from the Thought Seize. Oh. And there is oh. Teferi. <laughs> Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no, this is just worst case scenario now for Brad Nelson. He's not gonna love seeing this, but uh, discipline play there, a lot of patience from Barclay, not wanting to fire that off until he's absolutely sure that the coast is clear. Yeah, and I think everybody in chat is probably just seeing like, what, why Teferi would have resolved there, this would have been insane. Then you have Aether Gust. We all know that, that it would resolve, but with that many cards from Nelson, you gotta suspect that there's some permission mm -hmm. Some counter spells waiting in Nelson's hand. Uh, Barkley played the played it very conservatively here, and this time didn't work out great. But um, a, a, a good play if you do expect in a gate. Yeah, for sure. And we're likely going to see him hold it here again. Um, you yeah. know, until such time as 
he can get to fairy out with absorb backup. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's in no rush. He's oh, we're gonna see. No, I was about to say hard cost talk typhoon. No, no, we're not there yet. <laughs> uh, but currently, you know, he's chipping away at the life total here, two points in, in the air each time. It's gonna stop now that there's a three three on the other side, and that can't be dealt with with the hand that he has. Oh, but there is indeed. A there is a risk to waiting for Teferi because like, let's say Nelson's hand was just like two shark typhoons, right? Like all of a sudden then Teferi Hero of Dominaria is not even gonna be a good card. So there is a lot of risk to reward um, things that you have to be thinking of if you're Barkley. And that's, if I don't play Teferi now, how much better does it get? And now Barkley's kind of in this position where now he really can't cast Teferi. Um, but, you know, right away on that turn five when Nelson only had two mana up, maybe that was a time to go for it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. These two eliminates still sitting in hand. And the gate, though. Okay. So now if Barclay does get impatient and wants to fire off the fairy, he's going to be punished for it. And one thing that we don't don't normally have to do in hysteric histor hysteric historic as much as we do in standard <laughs> is keep track of that graveyard count like we do when we have rogues somewhere. Yeah. But right now the graveyard count is very important for Barclay, and I wouldn't be too shocked if we're getting close to the search flipping. Well, let's see. Is it time to flip? What's going in the graveyard? Another land? Not yet. Right. Oh, another Teferi. All right, this card is just being, it's been an absolute house here for Brad Barkley, just filtering through this library, getting rid of redundant lands. And here's the one aspect of the game where Barkley is completely fine with Nelson not really doing anything. And that's this draw go game because look mm -hmm. at these tokens. This is adding up very quickly. The yep. one thing that does get Barkley kind of punished is if Nelson were to have just a giant crisis. And that's all Nelson is really channeling right now. It's like, please give me this jellyfish. Yep. Me that jellyfish hydra beast whatever the heck it is who knows what the simic get up to but he's not he's not slowing down he's just gonna keep pummeling away here yeah interesting here nelson trying to race in a situation like this is interesting because i think he is losing this race with another castle token mm -hmm. you can eliminate one but that's a two-turn clock for uh barkley and right now it is a three-turn clock for nelson I don't know if that shark really gives you an extra turn. Um, so maybe that's the thought process for Nelson here. Yeah, well, now just liberating over whether or not Nissa needs to come on down. Yeah, and one one way, one thing that Nissa does help right now is tap some mana from Barclay. Barclay, just so you don't have Castle Ardenvale of, available. Mm -hmm. One less token to worry about. Yeah, but even then, he's hedging his bets a lot on a crisis. And at this point, you got to think he's got to be on, on the defensive here and try and just block these tokens. Yeah, really, really tough spot for Nelson here. Because you and I know this Ness is not going to see the light of day on this battlefield. No. This is about as close as it's going to get to this battlefield, hovering above it. <laughs> so here comes the first of the absorbs, two available. Negate's going to counter that absorb. But here comes another one, just like the other one. And Nelson knows this isn't going to work because we the Aether Gust is known. We don't know about the second absorb, uh, but that really swings this race completely out of reach, right? Absorb yeah. on this negate, gain six. That makes it so the shark is, is not going to be winning the game without controlling these 1-1 one, one humans. Yeah, so Castle Ardenvale being one of the ways that these Azorius control decks love to f close out the games. Looks like that's exactly what's going to happen. And Brad Nelson oh. is going to concede, scoop it up to Brad Barclay, who picks up the victory here in our top eight.